So why? Why was the entire Mueller investigation illegitimate to begin with? Well, Senator Lindsey Graham requested that the Department of Justice Office of Legislative Affairs finally send over to him the memo regarding the scope of investigation and definition of authority for Bob Mueller's special counsel team. Now, he got most of the memo unredacted. Now, there is a significant part unredacted, and I will tell you, there's, so there's one individual, one individual we don't know about in this memo. Fan, I want to start with that because I'm going to hold it up. We, we hear about Paul Manafort, Papadopoulos, Michael Flynn, and one other individual. Now, is it, is it the Trump campaign or is it the president himself? And you've got to wonder why they still keep this redacted. Yeah, there's a whole lot in this memo, Jordan, that has been unredacted. I know we're going to get to it. There's enough in that portion, but you do have to wonder what is still behind the black lines. I will tell you, people on Capitol Hill are asking the question that you just asked, who inside the Trump campaign or maybe the president himself? I would put it to you this way, Jordan. I have maybe my own suspicions on who it is, uh, but I would I would tell you this. If it's any United States citizen, based on how the investigations were run against the other four individuals in this memo, uh, Jordan... They deserve to know. I mean, whether they committed a wrong or they did not, we know the missteps in this investigation have been so egregious and the violations against U.S. citizens are so egregious. If that is a United States citizen, whether it's a president of the United States or a minimum wage worker that has nothing to do with the campaign, uh, Jordan, that U.S. citizen needs to know that this group of individuals who abuse their power was also looking at them. We need to know who's under those black lines. So this was an August 2nd, 2017 memo from Rod Rosenstein to Bob Mueller, the scope of investigation and definition of authority. And the first is you are within the scope of the order to investigate, quote, the allegations that Carter Page committed a crime or crimes by colluding with Russian government officials with respect to the Russian government's efforts to interfere with the 2016 election for president of the United States in violation of the United States law. By the time this memo was written, John Solomon pointed this out in a new memo and a new article uh, today. By the time this memo was drafted, sent to Bob Mueller, we knew this. The FBI had already fired uh, Christopher Steele as an informant for leaking. They had already interviewed Steele's subsource who disputed information attributed to him. They had ascertained that allegations Steele had given the FBI specifically about Carter Page were inaccurate and likely came from Russian intelligence sources as disinformation. And FBI had been informed repeatedly by the CIA that Carter Page was not a Russian stooge, but rather a cooperating intelligence asset for the United States government. And yet, in the scope of investigation, the first person listed, Carter Page, After all of that information, clearing Carter Page has been informed. The FBI has learned about it, which means the DOJ knows about it. That is part of the reason, just part of the reason, Lindsey Graham has said it puts the whole Mueller investigation and calls into question how illegitimate it was. Folks, the ACLJ is doing work all across the country on all the issues that you care about, all across the world on the issues you care about. And we're able to broadcast it to you because of your support. We're able to do the work in our country because of your support. We're able to do the work internationally because of your financial support. No amount too small, no amount too big. It all makes a huge impact. Go to aclj.org and donate today. For 30 years, the American Center for Law and Justice has been dedicated to protecting your religious and constitutional freedoms. Because of you, we've seen great success in the courts and Congress concerning the issues that matter most to you and your families. ACLJ Chief Counsel Jay Sekulow. Our decades-long commitment to the Constitution and the rule of law is at the center of everything we do. The bottom line, our work could not take place without your generous support. It's a critical time for our nation and our world. With so many challenges facing our country, the work of the American Center for Law and Justice has never been more important. And during this time of uncertainty, there's no better way to support the ACLJ than through online giving. We truly appreciate your financial support. Without it, it would be impossible to do our work here and around the globe. And the best way to support our work is to make your financial gifts online at eclj.org. 
Donating online is safe and secure, and an online gift at ACLJ.org can be put to work immediately, enabling the ACLJ to continue the battle against abortion giant Planned Parenthood. These are our young people in their 20s and 30s that are doing this and fighting for life at a whole new level to beat back the abortion juggernaut. We've got a whole group of young lawyers that are defending them. To protect Christians facing persecution. The level of persecution is on the rise. It's being reported more. We're talking about situations where people are put in jail, threatened with death or life imprisonment simply because of who they are and what they believe. To stand up for our good friend Israel, to work to uncover the corrupt deep state in Washington, and so much more. Make a difference today. Support the work of the ACLJ online at aclj.org. Every dollar makes a difference. Give today online at aclj.org. Can we play Lindsey Graham for everybody today? I just want to. I just want everybody to hear this, uh, Senator Lindsey Graham. When he got this, it's a it's a short memo. I mean, it's it's uh you know it's a, if you put it all together and don't include the redaction, it, it's two and a half pages. I mean, this is a short memo in August second, twenty seventeen. It laid out the scope. I mean, I'll tell you what this was on May seventeenth, twenty seventeen. This is Rod Rosenstein to Bob Mueller. I issued an order entitled "Appointment of Special Counsel to Investigate Russian Interference with the twenty sixteen Presidential Election Related Matters," appointing you to serve as special counsel. The order authorized you to conduct the investigation confirmed by then FBI Director Jim Comey in testimony before the House. Any links or coordination between the Russian government and individuals associated with the campaign of President Donald Trump and any matters that arose or may arise directly from that investigation. That line right there, that point two, um, opens the door up to basically everything. But now we get a little more specific on some of the individuals Bob Mueller was targeting uh, that more more specifically than just the Trump campaign. Listen to Lindsey Graham, bite number six. So there was no legitimate reason to believe any of these four were working with the Russians on August the 2nd, 2017. Therefore, the entire Mueller investigation was illegitimate to begin with. And that then is because the entire dossier that lists people like Carter Page and others, George Papadopoulos, uh, you look at this list, Mike Flynn, uh, was completely discredited already before this this scope memo was given to Bob Mueller. The, the information was discredited. They didn't need to look there because the FBI and the CIA had already concluded that this was not accurate information. And yet they went on. Somebody- they went on, Than They didn't provide the exculpatory info on Michael Flynn, which... We now know was stamped with SCO, Special Counsel's Office, even though they, that was under their purview now. We know Michael Flynn was under their purview for the time period where the Special Counsel was, was appointed. And they didn't bring that information forward. And they carried on this multi-million dollar investigation that led to finding nothing, which they should have known because they were told from the beginning by the FBI and CIA there was nothing there just like Peter Strzok knew, there is no there there. This was just to damage the president and divide the country for years and drag us through the mud. There was so much sleight of hand going on at various points of this, Jordan. There are two main things that bother me about today's uh, development. The first is that we were continually told by whether it was the special counsel or Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein or others involved that the scope of this investigation was narrow, 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 that they were not going down rabbit trails, that it was not open-ended, that it was very narrow. We now know from this memo that anything, uh, that couldn't have been further from the truth, Jordan. I mean, really, these four individuals and a fifth who we don't yet know about, uh, that is what you consider a narrow scoped investigation. And then the second thing, uh, we were led to believe, uh, again, by testimony from the same individuals, and I would include the special counsel in that because he gave offhanded answers that so much of this happened before he was brought on or the investigation was open or the information about the Steele dossier was exposed. We were led to believe uh, that they did not look at the dossier, Jordan. Those weren't his exact words, but it was basically I was brought on after the investigation was opened and after the Steele dossier uh, was complied with. Well, Jordan, 
if that is the case, then Carter Page should not be listed in this scope memo that went from uh, Rosenstein to, to Robert Mueller. So, you know, he may not have outright said he didn't look at it, but Jordan, being um, willing to give the impression that that was outside the scope when here in black and white, it is clearly within the scope, that is extremely problematic, Jordan. Yeah, I mean, I look at then, let's look at some of the other individuals, some who faced serious consequences from this, including Paul Manafort. It wasn't just, did he commit crimes by colluding with Russian government officials with respect to interfere with the 2016 election, which I thought would be the scope of why you'd be looking at this, right? Then, I mean, you'd be looking at Paul Manafort to see if he colluded with Russians. No, it goes on to say, it just shows the bias here. Was there anything wrong with what he did with the Ukrainian government consulting, which has nothing to do with uh, the Trump campaign? Was there anything wrong to do with bank loans he got that had nothing to do with the Trump campaign and colluding with Russia? So even with Paul Manafort, who's been convicted of serious crimes unrelated to anything involving the Trump campaign, why was the special counsel and not just regular prosecutors uh, assigned that task to take him down? Part of me thinks it's because they had no one else to take down through this it was so weak, so they needed somebody who maybe committed some crimes that usually aren't even charged or looked into that they could take down. And so Paul Manafort, unfortunately for him, became that target. So they added this on for Paul Manafort, even though it was totally unrelated to uh, his work with the Trump campaign. I wholly agree with that, Jordan, because what is the most efficient way to pursue the two crimes that you talked about, the one related to Ukraine, the one related to a bank loan? It would have actually been to separate it out from the special counsel's purview right. and allow the prosecution to proceed in regular course. But then what would have happened, Jordan? I mean, let's say Paul Manafort still gets convicted outside the re regular course. The special counsel then doesn't have a scalp to hold up. And I know that's a pretty graphic language, but Jordan, literally, I, I, I think that is why that is included in the scope. So that he can refer it out in due course. And then at least as you go along, remember how this happened, Jordan, there were announcements along the ways about, you know, potential victories, I guess, prosecutorial victories that the special counsel had. And this was one of them by including it in the scope. It gave the special counsel the opportunity along the way to show progress, even though progress, Jordan, had nothing to do with what the public was be, was being told was in his purview. There's two more individuals listed on this scope that are more, you know, there was a general look inside to see if the Trump campaign colluded or conspired with Russia. And then there were four individuals we know about. A fifth has been redacted. We don't know who that fifth person is. We could assume it's either some, it's someone inside the U.S. government currently. So is it the president of the United States, President Trump? I mean, it just be guessing at this point, but there was a reason to redact. Uh, they redacted that uh, for for purposes uh, that we don't know about yet. Because the next two are also egregious for different reasons than Carter Page, who they already knew all the information that was negative about him was made up, discredited in the dossier, discredited. The FBI didn't believe it. The CIA, the intelligence community didn't believe it. In fact, he was an agent of the U.S. government. He was working for the U.S. government, helping the U.S. government. You, you want you want some rich irony on this case, Jordan? It's a, it's not directly related to this memo, but all of this ties together. Uh, James Comey and Andrew Weissman, Jordan, they have both found gigs in the academic world uh, teaching what? Teaching ethics yeah. courses. Can you yeah. imagine they're teaching ethics courses right now? That I think that's something that the American people should know and would probably have an interest in. And by the way, if CLA credit is being granted for taking ethics courses from those two, maybe we need to reevaluate. But look, mm -hmm. I really do think the right people are looking at these now. I think John Durham has it under his purview. I know the attorney general is looking at it. It does still give me consternation that redact there are redactions, Jordan. But I will say this, there might be a good reason for it now. And yeah. I do take great comfort in the people that are looking at it now. My problem is the four individuals you've talked about, Jordan, until yesterday, they were redacted as well. So, yep. Yeah, I mean, think about that, folks. These were people, listen, we haven't named the next two. I'll give you a little preview. It's George Papadopoulos, and it was way more than what we thought about for him that they were looking into. And this was like a campaign volunteer. And Mike Flynn, surprise, surprise, Mike Flynn is on this list. The redacted one, listen, if it was the president and we know that the president was completely cleared here and they redacted him because they didn't want to throw his name through the mud, I understand that. 
Um, but was it somebody else that they're protecting? I don't think so because this came from Bill Barr, so he's probably saying we're not gonna we're not gonna throw through the mud someone who has already been cleared through this. Folks, the ACLJ is doing work all across the country on all the issues that you care about, all across the world on the issues you care about. And we're able to broadcast it to you because of your support. We're able to do the work in our country because of your support. We're able to do the work internationally because of your financial support. No amount too small, no amount too big. It all makes a huge impact. Go to aclj.org, donate today. For 30 years, the American Center for Law and Justice has been dedicated to protecting your religious and constitutional freedoms. Because of you, we've seen great success in the courts and Congress concerning the issues that matter most to you and your families. ACLJ Chief Counsel Jay Sekulow. Our decades-long commitment to the Constitution and the rule of law is at the center of everything we do. The bottom line, our work could not take place without your generous support. It's a critical time for our nation and our world. With so many challenges facing our country, the work of the American Center for Law and Justice has never been more important. And during this time of uncertainty, there's no better way to support the ACLJ than through online giving. We truly appreciate your financial support. Without it, it would be impossible to do our work here and around the globe. And the best way to support our work is to make your financial gifts online at ACLJ.org. Donating online is safe and secure, and an online gift at ACLJ.org can be put to work immediately, enabling the ACLJ to continue the battle against abortion giant Planned Parenthood. These are our young people in their 20s and 30s that are doing this and fighting for life at a whole new level to beat back the abortion juggernaut. We've got a whole group of young lawyers that are defending them. To protect Christians facing persecution. The level of persecution is on the rise. It's being reported more. We're talking about situations where people are put in jail, threatened with death or life imprisonment simply because of who they are and what they believe. To stand up for our good friend Israel, to work to uncover the corrupt deep state in Washington, and so much more. Make a difference today. Support the work of the ACLJ online at aclj.org. Every dollar makes a difference. Give today online at aclj.org. But Fox News is reporting now that Adam Schiff is in crisis mode because there is nothing in the transcripts, nothing in the transcripts that we've been talking about, the 53 transcripts that allude to Trump-Russia collusion, Than. So just to go back to that for a moment, I mean, because I think this all ties together. It's, it's the same thing. Uh, that he's in a crisis mode about releasing these transcripts because if that is the case and in, in involved in, you know, testimony from top Trump officials, including the Trump's President Trump's son and son-in-law, his top campaign advisors, top aides, it also included top Obama officials. If it shows that there was no Trump-Russia collusion, it undermines, kind of like how this memo discredits the entire Mueller investigation, as Lindsey Graham said, this would undermine everything Adam Schiff was doing. Yeah, I'm hearing from several different sources on Capitol Hill, Jordan, that that description of Chairman Schiff is pretty accurate right now, that he is in somewhat of a panic mode trying to scramble and figure out how to comply uh, with the ultimate release of these transcripts that now looks apparent. It does sound like maybe at some point he is going to put them out. A couple of things are really ironic, though, uh, Jordan. It does sound like the transcripts show no collusion, which, of course, is what the report found in the end. But in the intervening space, Chairman Schiff was running to the cameras and saying he had direct evidence of co uh, collusion. So when these transcripts are out. That's going to be very difficult yeah. for him uh, to explain. Jordan, maybe the other thing that's more interesting, though, he's now blaming the intelligence community for the delay, saying it took too long. Uh -huh. Never mind that he had 43 of those uh, back in, in June of last year. Yeah, and he held on to 10, but sources are telling Fox News. Uh, and remember, there are a lot of members of Congress who were there for these uh, this testimony. Uh, the Republicans were conducting it. That there is no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion in these transcripts. So that Adam Schiff is in panic mode. Why did you continue this narrative? Why did we uh, not put this information out clearly and have to wait for Bob Mueller to tell everybody? But yet, Bob Mueller, as we just got from a friend of ours, hey, they needed a reason to stay in business for as long as possible. So they got 
to federal grand juries to play with, and they don't want to willingly give that up. So let me go to the next two people, and then we're going to play some sound for you that's pretty interesting. So George Papadopoulos is the third person listed here. He was a campaign volunteer. So in the scope, the DOJ wanted to look at whether or not he committed or a crime or crimes by colluding with Russian government officials with respect to, okay, intervening in the 2016 election. The second one was whether George Papadopoulos committed a crime or crimes by acting as an unregistered agent of the government of Israel. First time we've heard that one. That would be a FARA violation. Now, this was a, a law that until recently, the Foreign Agents Registration Act was something that you would pay a penalty usually for if the government thought you were violating. But now the DOJ uh, is trying to more strictly enforce. They haven't had a great uh, run at doing that, by the way, uh, because the same people who are trying to enforce it and the newest person at DOJ trying to enforce it is the same DOJ attorney who withheld all of the information about Michael Flynn. So they were trying to go after Papadopoulos on a fair violation involving the government of Israel. What fan does that have to do with Russia collusion with the Trump campaign? Yeah, nothing. Uh, pulling nothing. out all the stops, Jordan. I mean, looking at FARA, looking at the Logan Act, trying to, uh, you know, keep this scope as narrow as possible, wholly related on on Russia, except for all of these other things that either are never charged or, or have nothing to do with the case. And, and Jordan, I think the other thing that's uh, worth mentioning here, all due respect to George Papadopoulos, this was not like a campaign manager. This is a, a, a low-level staffer in his late 20s who I think is probably a, a very a smart person, but this is, this is not someone who was steering the, the direction of the uh, incoming president of the United States. That's the level to which the intelligence community apparatus uh, was was trying to engage against American citizens. Someone in their late 20s who did not have the ear of the president. I mean, think about this. I'll get to Michael Flynn in a moment. Patty wrote in on Facebook. They all knew it was a lie from the beginning, yet they continued down the rabbit hole to find nothing, and now they've covered it up. That's what Adam Schiff is trying to do with not releasing these transcripts. But Congressman Steve Shabbat, listen to him when he questioned Bob Mueller about why Fusion GPS or anyone linked to Fusion GPS, why are they not mentioned at all in your 448-page report that relied so heavily, now that we know from your scope memo, on information in the dossier, especially the Carter Page information? Why no mention? And, of course, Bob Mueller is punting. Take a listen. Fusion GPS produced the opposition research document widely known as the Steele dossier, and the owner of Fusion GPA was uh, someone named Glenn Simpson. Are, are you familiar with? Yeah, this is outside my purview. Okay. Um, Glenn Simpson was never mentioned in the 448-page Mueller report, was he? Well, this is, as I say, it's outside my purview, and it's being handled in the department by others. Okay. Well, he, he was not. Uh, 448 pages, the, the owner of Fusion GPS... Uh, that did the Steele dossier, that started all this. Uh, he, he's not mentioned in there. He's not mentioned in there. I think Senator John Kennedy said it best. Take a listen to this, Bite 13, after he saw this memo. Take a listen. I wasn't as surprised by the scope memo, I, I think, based on what I observed and uh, what the American people observed throughout the Mueller investigation. It always appeared that uh, they were just after a scalp. A scalp. And Than, that brings me to Michael Flynn. Michael Flynn, he got the most bullet points, even more than Paul Manafort. So one was, did he commit a crime by engaging in conversations with Russian government officials during the period of the Trump transition? That would be a Logan Act violation. It has never been used before, or maybe once before. It comes from 1799, before telephones. And it makes it a crime. Let me just t tell people what the Logan Act is. It makes it a crime for a U.S. state, a federal law that criminalizes negotiation by unauthorized, remember, negotiation by unauthorized American citizens with foreign governments having a dispute with the U.S. Now, why would that apply as a crime to the national, incoming national security advisor to the President of the United States during a transition uh, if he was going to talk to a world superpower like Russia. It wouldn't. The Logan Act is likely unconstitutional, by the way, because it's never really been applied. No one's been charged criminally with this um, since the invention of modern communication. And it's and the reason why is because the Department of Justice doesn't want to bring charges with it because it would likely declare the whole act unconstitutional. That was the first thing they noted, Than, 
to try and go after Michael Flynn on was just talking to Russian government officials during the transition. This is after the election. You're coming into office. You're going to be the national security advisor for the incoming president of the United States in a matter of days. Why wouldn't you be talking to the the one of the world superpowers amongst others? You know, it's this focus on Russia, but I'm sure he was talking to other world leaders uh, and other other international governments as well. If you're not talking to Russian leaders uh, being in that position incoming, it's dereliction of duty, Jordan, plain and simple. And look, I would tell you, uh, I agree with you that uh, uh, charging the Logan Act or looking into investigations of the Logan Act is is almost laughable. But Jordan, if there's a Logan Act violation here, I mean, I, you know, I think about the fact that General Flynn got crosswise with President Obama. So is this retaliation because there's a political dispute with the outgoing president of the United States? I mean, if there's a Logan Act, I, I think that one probably is is more apply, applicable. Yeah, there's also some. The next one's even more uh, dangerous, I think, for Michael Flynn. It was, it was ridiculous because a special counsel was tasked with did he commit a, Michael Flynn commit a crime or crimes by making false statements to the FBI when interviewed about his contacts with the Russian government. And now we know the special counsel's office was sitting on the exculpatory evidence that Michael Flynn did not, in fact, lie. So they got tasked with that, but yet didn't put forward the exculpatory evidence. Folks, the ACLJ is doing work all across the country on all the issues that you care about, all across the world on the issues you care about. And we're able to broadcast it to you because of your support. We're able to do the work in our country because of your support. We're able to do the work internationally because of your financial support. No amount too small, no amount too big. It all makes a huge impact. Go to aclj.org, donate today. For more than 27 years, the ACLJ has been fighting for freedom and liberty in the United States and around the globe. Chief Counsel Jay Sekulow has argued 12 times before the United States Supreme Court, including several landmark cases protecting religious and constitutional freedoms. The ACLJ is active in the courts, in Congress, and in the public arena. And joining me now is Jay Sekulow, the Chief Counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice. The Jay Sekulow Live Radio Program reaches over 1,000 stations nationwide and streams live on Facebook to more than 4 million users daily. With a weekly TV program and an active social media presence, the ACLJ has created a powerful media strategy to continue the fight for freedom and liberty nearly 300,000 people in two weeks. If we can do that in a couple of weeks, imagine what we can do in six months. Imagine what we can do in a year. Imagine what we can do if we stand together. Your support makes a critical difference. So thank you for joining with us. Thank you for standing with us as we seek to proclaim freedom and liberty here in the United States and around the globe.